Now we've defined these classes. It seems like they should be very different. Our class NP, we're adding all this power, which we can think of as always guessing correct or always doubling our machine. And the question is, are there functions that we can compute with the polynomial number of depths where adding all that power changes what we can do? And this is the question we don't know the answer to. I'm drawing these classes now, making them look different. So we've got the yellow circle is P, the purple circle is class NP. All of the ones that are in NP here, they could be in P, but we don't know if they are or not. We don't know that they're not in P. We do know that they are within the class NP. And we know that because we can show that there is either a non-determinist Turing machine that solves them or a polynomial with time witness. If the classes are equal, if these sets are equal, that means every function in NP is also in P. One way to prove that would be go through all the functions that are in NP and prove each one is in P. There are infinitely many. We are not going to finish that process. So definitely that's not a strategy that's going to lead to a proof. What we're starting to get to, so you've seen ways to do reductions. If you knew how to solve long path, you could also solve three set. There's a way to use long path to solve three set. Right? So this meant that we can map this problem to the other one. If we knew long path also reduced to a problem in P, that would cover three set as well. So if we can show reductions between problems, we're going to only need to show it for one problem. Once we've shown these problems are equivalent, then if we can show that one of the problems that's equivalent is also in P, then we're done. And the big theorem that we're getting to is showing that all of the problems that are in NP, they can be reduced to three set. Every problem in class NP can be reduced to three set. And that means they could also all be reduced to longest path. Once they're all reduced to three set, then if we can reduce three set to any problem in P, well, that would show all these problems can be reduced to each other, that they're all within class P. If we can prove that we can't, if we can get a separation and know that there's no problem in P that it can be reduced to, well, that would mean that the classes are different. That would explicitly be an example of here's a function in NP that's not in P. So that's what we want to get to. Certainly, if we had to prove for every single problem, we're never going to get there. These problems seem that there's not going to be any efficient way to solve them, and people have been trying for a long time without success. But people have also been trying for a long time without success to separate them. So kind of the trying for a long time without success argument does not hold up very well. The theorem that we're going to get to is to say that we've got one problem, which is the three sat problem, that every problem that's within class NP, so this is our big class NP, there is a polynomial time reduction from every problem within NP to three sat. We don't know, need to know anything about the problem other than that it is within class NP, and we can guarantee that there is some reduction. We don't necessarily know exactly what the reduction is, but there must exist one. Once we've got one problem that we said every single problem within this infinitely large class NP can be reduced to this problem in polynomial time, whatever we can show about this problem, if this is within class P, then all of these other problems transitively can also be solved in polynomial time. The reason we use this less than or equal to symbol for reductions is to get across, yes, it is transitive, just like less than or equal to. And it also should give you the intuition of it's about hardness. This is harder, or at least as hard. I don't know if you learned about the alligator mouth wants to eat the bigger number when you went to school. I learned about that. Here, the alligator mouth wants to eat the harder problem. So this means 3SAT is at least as hard as every problem within NP, where we're talking about polynomial time reductions, right? So at least as hard is modulo what polynomial work. If it could be reduced to a polynomial time problem, so could every other problem within class NP. Why do they have this transitive property? Why can we keep doing them? How do we know there's a polynomial time reduction between x and z? Good, yeah. So what happens when you add two polynomials? You get a polynomial. So the work here to go from x to z, if you have to go through these two steps, is this work plus this work. And if we add polynomials, whatever polynomials they are, and these can be totally different polynomials, they're all polynomial in n, the size of the problem. Let's be careful. This is polynomial in the size of that problem. Is this polynomial in the same n? What's the biggest size the y problem could have for the second reduction? It's got to be polynomial in that. We can increase the size of the problem as we do a reduction, 
but only by a polynomial amount. We're still going to be a polynomial. Right? If we're talking about the actual number of steps to solve it, that's going to be more. Doing two reductions is going to be more than doing one. There might be a more clever one that composes them. But they're all still going to be polynomials, and that's all we care about, at least in defining these classes. That's our definition. Polynomial time reductions just mean there is some function that is in P, so P is things that we can do in polynomial time, such that we can transform the input that we had for F. So we're trying to show that we can solve X using G, that we can get the right output for F of X by running G on R of X. That means that whatever time it takes to run G, we can solve X in the time it takes to run G plus some amount of time that it takes to run R, which is a polynomial in this case, because we limited R to things that we can do in polynomial time. We've got two possible answers to this question. Either the sets are equal, or there are some things in NP that are not in P. They can't be disjoint, because we know that NP definitely includes everything in P, and it can't be that P is more powerful. If this is the case, what polynomial reductions are there between the problems in that circle? In order for there to be a polynomial time reduction, there has to be some function that is in polynomial time that we can run on x, and then we can run g on the output of that function and get the result of f of x. So if we have two functions that are in polynomial time, let's say f is in p and g is in p, can we pick something for r that's almost certainly going to work with a little bit of a tweak? R could be F. They're in polynomial time. F is a perfectly good choice for R. Is this going to work? What's the output of R of X going to be then? It's going to be F of X. The result we want is F of X. But G is going to run on that output. So what do we need to replace the output with? Yeah. So what we're going to do for R instead of F, we're going to do R is if f of x, what should the output of r of x be if f of x equals 1? Well, here we've got to know something about g. We've got to find some input to g where the output of g is 1. So the only thing we've got to know about g is there's some input to g. It can be any input that g produces a 1 on. So otherwise, it should be some input that g of y0 star so as long as we know some input that G outputs a 1 on and some input that it outputs a 0 on, we have this reduction. So between any two polynomial time functions, we should be able to find a reduction. There's only one little problem case. When does this not work? Yeah. If G is a constant function, we're stuck. We can't find any input where it outputs 1 if G always outputs 0. So there are two functions that we can't find reductions for. But those are kind of trivial. So for any interesting function, we can always find the reductions. So if p equals np, there would be reductions between all of these problems in all directions. The trivial reductions would work, because you could just run the original problem in polynomial time, and then you'd have to know an input. But for all of these problems, we know them enough to know an input. What if p is not equal to np, meaning it must be a strict subset? We still have these reductions. We could have reductions between these, and we saw one. But we know there are not reductions between these, between ones from NP to P. There must be some problem in NP that does not reduce to a problem in P. Otherwise, they would all be the same. 